my take, my perspective, my take on the Jacob Ingebrigtsen one mile run, three minutes, 43.73 seconds on Saturday, 16 September, 2023. So here I talk through the Jacob Ingebrigtsen one mile run race at the Bowerman Mile in 2023 in Eugene, Oregon, United States of America. Time of three minutes and 43.73 seconds in the final on Saturday, 16 September 2023. With his time, he achieved a personal best time, a European record, and first place. I provide my take slash perspective on his performance and contextualize it in terms of my recent reading about running styles of runners in the 1940s and 1950s. So, this is related to my own return to road running and some personal best times in running. Um, uh, return in personal best times, uh, uh, 2023, same year uh, he achieved this time that I'm talking about. I am Tannis Corley Leonardi. This is my YouTube channel, Tannis Leonardi, and I'm filming this Friday, 26 January, 2024. So I have watched the race. I am going to contextualize once, and only once thus far. And he, it starts with the water, what I have termed uh, waterfowl, waterfall type start. So all the runners are aligned and they kind of go and then they fight for it, uh, so to speak. And I, I was wa I, I was watching and I saw everybody lined up and there was like one runner towards the outside. I saw the person and I was like, dang, that looks like Jacob Ingebrigtsen. I was like, they want to put him all the way on the outside, would they? And then they start off and he kind of is like middle of the pack and I was like, okay, maybe it's not Jacob Ingebrigtsen. And then he slowly pulls ahead and I'm like, yep, it is Jacob Ingebrigtsen. So I got that right uh, at the beginning. That was Jacob Ingebrigtsen. But... I did, I, did I second guess myself? No, I kept following the, the runner through the pack and I was like, but would that be a Jacob Ingebrigtsen running style? It turns out it was for this race. And so he he doesn't actually go out first. He's kind of middle of the pack and then slowly gains to take on the lead and then hold on to it across the finish line. Uh, though he was challenged over the past lap and a half by an American. Um, though he still wins the race, the, the commenter brings up Roger Bannister, and I was like, but he's more of a John Landy, and let me tell you why. Because I've read a book where the person interviewed people and read the running notes and news releases about these people and puts it in a book, and I was like, I think he's more of a John Landy. And that, coming from me, is a compliment, because I really like John Landy. Right, um, so, yes. But as I do this, I'm going to do a beef patty. It's Patty. Four ounces. And I'm going to top it. This is going to be my first brand or site where I do three consecutive videos or three videos, period, consecutive or non-consecutive, uh, in a day of site and or brand specific uh, items. And this is both. It's Sean O'Donnell's American Grill and Irish Pub. And this is uh, Irish butter. Um, so I'm going to take some of the butter and put it on the burger like this because that's what I thought of when I was eating the butter earlier this is the third video that I've actually had the butter in it's really good okay and so Jacob Ingebrigtsen is Norwegian and I'm Norwegian we are both semi he's pure I'm part um so there's the, I, I enjoy watching him because he's a very handsome man. And this race really showcases his legs. His fabulous legs. He's, and so before I, I delve, delve into the contextualization, um, if you're watching it, right, which one do you see? He, there's a spectrum, I would say, in middle distance running where there's like the skinny people and then the bigger people. I'm not going to say fat because it's middle distance running. Okay. If you're out there achieving some time, you're not fat, even if you have high percentage body fat. Okay. Just, um, so like the skinny and the, the bigger, and he's like, if there's a middle here, like a line, he's like the skinny of the bigs. That's how, or the biggers is how I would phrase it. And so... <laughs> just be because there's a spread in the race and so identifying the runner and which was actually a little bit like john landy's body style as well okay. 
And so that he doesn't break really far ahead of the pack is a bit like gel nanny, but also he instead of challenging at the end or the home stretch, he chooses to maintain. He also does this thing. It, I lost track of counting, but I think it was like lot three where he actually does look behind him at the runner behind him an american middle distance running so i live in the united states of america at least currently if one looks behind one especially in middle distance running it's kind of viewed as the runner um being weak you shouldn't have to look behind you but that is actually something john landy did in his races And John Landy was also a consistent performer to the finish line. Not necessarily winning a race in the last few meters, but consistent performance. I think... I don't know if, if Jacob Ingebrigtsen trains on the trails of Norway or Sweden or Finland. It's kind of what the runners of Sweden did in the 1940s and 1950s. It was what was it? The tracks were viewed for competition only. I would I have no idea. Um if I were to train with Yankee Binky Britson, um and I were coach, we'd be running on the roads after training. Um this is very good, by the way. I think he kinda does it like a and get Britson afterwards, like, it was a, not necessarily what he wanted. Um, he was off, what, less, he, he was fast. It was a European record. I'm European, so he satisfied my belly. So to speak. I'm pleased with his performance. He's beautiful Norwegian eye candy for this Norwegian lady. Just truly flawless. Like this burger with butter. Where am I going with this? So he expressed what? Discontent with his time? Well, I would like to see from. I've still I've watched a number of his races. What I would like to see from him. Or, like, if I were his coach, how in this race were reiterated, so, like, the same stuff, and nobody changed anything, the result would be exactly the same as it was. If I were his coach, what I would want to see from him is for him at the three-quarter mile mark to be ten seconds faster than he was at the three-quarter mile mark on 16 September 2023 in this race. He's good enough in his endurance that he could push before the end of the race. Um, I'm that way. John Landy was a bit that way. And he did, right? Um, like if he took over the lead in the middle of the race, not at the very beginning or the very end in this race. So he's already a bit like that. Like John Landy in that way. But then thinking of, okay, let's say he overtook in, in the second quarter. Then the third quarter would be instead of holding, um, increasing the lead. And then maintaining on, which retains his current style on the fourth quarter. Yeah. So... I find this result and time and technique of his, interestingly enough, that I am thinking of adapting it to my own 5.8 mile road walk around set today or tomorrow. So we shall see. Ingebrigtsen inspired. You guys already know I do my walk run in the rain or if I'm not feeling well inspired. Not always in the rain. 
we'll do Ingerberson inspired runs. Oh, that's walk runs. That's not new. Um, what would be new is adapting his one mile run race and seeing if I can translate to four point not four <laughs> five point eight zero miles. Okay, so that's my athletic uh, performance contextualization. My take on the Jacob Ingerberson one mile run. 3 minutes, 43.73 seconds on 16 September 2023. I'm Tannis Corley Leonardi. It's my YouTube channel, Tannis Leonardi. And thank you for joining me. Oh, what was this? That was a 70 out of 10. The butter, though, was like... I was like, I don't know if I'll be satisfied, but the butter really... is the icing on the cake. <laughs> icing on the burger. <laughs>